Come with me to Vienna. I am heading to Vienna. I'm gonna go rest a little bit post eclipse season. I'm gonna explore the famous city of Vienna. Don't know much about it. Going to relax and rest, chilling out and working while I'm there. I'm also going to talk about the three transits that are on my mind for 2025. And these are not transits that I'm sharing in this video that are the result of a detailed complex breakdown of all of the aspects and all of the energies and shifts and cycles. So we'll have more of that on the channel. These transits are simply the ones when I am lying asleep, having done a lot of readings this year and talked about the year 2025 with a lot of people, having done some collaborations already on the year 2025, you can check out Dan Waits' channel. We've done a couple of collaborations recently getting into next year, but it's just when I go to bed at night, it's kind of like these are the three that are on my mind as I work with the year. And this is how we move through the year, right? We need to map higher level movements of time. Here now, October 2024, we're getting to that point where the 2025 planning is highly relevant, especially that Mars is now in shadow and slowing. And so we can plan and prep. A lot of the themes over the next several months are gonna be delayed action. So it's plan and prep time. What are the transits that we'll be diving into? And these might sound a little strange upon first listen, but Venus is direct station right in Pisces. The second will be Jupiter's entry to Cancer, of course, that's a big deal. 9 June. Third transit will, of course, be Uranus's ingress into Gemini. Those are the three transits. And I'm going to break down why, the context of why, the details of why. I think it's an important video because 2025 is one of the biggest years we're going to have or that we will have had in quite some time. It rivals 2020, maybe exceeds 2020 in terms of the amount of heavy symbols that you know, befall us uh, astrologically in 2025. So stay tuned with me, taking you a little bit into Vienna. Come with me on my trip. I'm SJ Anderson, astrologer. Travel in light. This is a 21L backpack, but it fits my laptop and that's the key because on the road I've got to be editing and working and doing reading. Landed in Vienna. Wow, interesting city. I'm so surprised a little bit how advanced Vienna is. You know, it's really a so-called first world city. And one thing I've been thinking about as I've been here, you know, in 1913, you know who was living in Vienna and just how important this city is in terms of the West and the history of the 20th century. It was Hitler, Trotsky, Freud, Tito, the uh, president of Yugoslavia and one other I forgot, but they all lived in a small little area in 1913 here in Vienna. So I'm kind of trying to feel into some of that history while I'm here mainly because we're on the cusp of some really important stuff. The nature of 2025 and how much 2025 is a, I wasn't gonna say catalyzing is the verb I'm looking for. It's a really a catalyzing year, just like the teens. I think 2025 is that year, the catalyzing nature of that year in terms of the rest of the century. The 1913, a strange year because in Vienna, you had Hitler, Trotsky, Freud, Franz Ferdinand, that guy that was assassinated that triggered World War I, and then you had Tito. They were all here in the similar you know, region, two or three kilometers apart living. And it's one of these peculiar twists of history that sometimes everything rests on one little region or one little area that becomes the trigger point. I was looking at the charts in 1913 last night and Saturn was in Gemini. So we know there's this, somehow this Gemini activation. Of course, Gemini is the multiplicity. It's many things existing at, at one time. And that's one of the three transits that this video is built upon. It's gonna be the ingress of Uranus into Gemini in July, 2025, which we'll get to. I think there is something about Gemini where there's these kind of refracted realities, many things that are important. And that might've been some of that Saturnine energy. I think in our epoch, Saturn is in Gemini again in the 2030s. And of course, what else was Saturn in Gemini? 9-11 happened with Saturn in Gemini. So this isn't a Saturn and Gemini video, just a few asides here that I'm finding interesting. But Vienna, yeah, look around. You can follow me around here. You can just see how beautiful this place is and how cool the nature is here in Vienna. Really enjoying my time here and thinking about the peace that we have relative here in 2024. I mean, I know this is not the same in every part of the world, but there is some relative stability in many countries, of course, maybe not Eastern Europe so much if you're talking about Ukraine. I mean, the message is enjoying the peace we have here for the next part of 2024 and into 2025, because I think 2025 becomes this catalyzing year, this trigger year, at least symbolically with the astrology. So find some peace here wherever you are, fall or spring down under trying to find your chill. And I think Mars retrograde is really good for that because it's a delay and pause. And we get that energy now. We're in that zone where Mars is in its retrograde shadow. And so trying to rest here before Mars comes out of that retrograde shadow 
later in 2025 and stations direct of course on 24 February. So first point, my transit that's on my mind that I'm thinking about for next year when I go to sleep at night, and this isn't even me again doing the detailed comb through everything and trying to synthesize. This is just so far what I've been into with the astrology, what's sitting with my mind, and it's the direct station of Venus and Pisces. Again, why is this important? And I'm gonna give you the specific dates of all this stuff here in a second, but we have at the beginning of 2025, Mars will be retrograde, Jupiter will be retrograde. First Jupiter stations direct in early February, I think it's the 5th, and then Mars stations direct on the 24th of February. Within a few days after, actually, let me get the dates here, just hold it. So I tried to do that just from the memory, and I could give you a rough estimation but I'm going to get the exact dates up here and just read these out to you. The exact date of Jupiter's direct station in Gemini, the only direct station that it will have there is 4 February. So that kicks off this series of what the first little pocket of 2025 is, which is a shoe drops and another drops and another drops before we're fully thrust into this new reality. It's first the direct station of Jupiter in Gemini, 4 February, then the direct station of Mars in Cancer, 24 February, and 24 February until 2 March. That's the only time we will have with both Mars and Venus direct at the same time before Venus stations retrograde on the 2nd of March. You can think about it this way, Mars hands off to Venus. The retrograde blockage of Mars, it gets going again, but immediately hands that pause and delay baton to Venus. And then Venus has to have a 40 days and 40 night renewal period. During that Venus retrograde, we also have a full Mercury retrograde. And so it's not until this five-day pocket window in April 2025, first uh, Mercury stations direct on 7 April, and then Venus stations direct on 13 April UTC. And it's that moment where you now have Mars, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and then Saturn direct at the same time. Saturn will station direct late 2024. So Saturn is direct through all of this. November 2024, we have the direct station of Saturn. But do you see why when I lay awake, I am looking at that pivot time when the final planet adds itself to the direct movement of all this planetary milieu, and it's Venus. And so from that middle April moment, we are moving strongly into the summer cardinal activation, which is what we're about to talk about here soon. How might you play this personally? Well, just know this block and delay theme, which we're in now, and which will increasingly take over when Mars stations uh, retrograde in early December, five or six December, that doesn't end. We're not fully sloughing that off and into this new forward movement really until 15 April or 13 April. And so that is one of the three transits I'm sharing in this video about 2025 is that mid April final throwing off of the blocks and we can now move forward with our year. Have patience with yourself. If things aren't unfolding how you'd like them to, just know that the planetary delay energetic is gonna be around for a while. So the other way to play this is to plan, prepare, use this energy, knowing it's not time to act, knowing you might not have your relational energy fully resolved, knowing your Piscean sector, both Venus and Mercury station direct right in Pisces with Saturn, with the North Node, all of that stuff is in major process until we finally get that movement ahead, clearing the energy for us, 13 April, 2025. You know, and the other thing about it is that Venus is exalted in Pisces. So that is not just your average removal of the blocks. It's an extremely empowered, creative, loving, unifying uh, removal of the block energetic. So, you know, it adds a layer of auspiciousness. And so it's something to get really excited about. The dreamy, creative landscape, the co-creative nature of our reality, the synchronistic co-creative nature of reality you'll have access to that strongly when Venus stations direct in Pisces and then that it's in a series of dominoes falling until we're fully immersed in forward movement. It's quite, quite exciting. We get excited about this one. Very, very cool energy. The Prussian-Austrian War of 1866 had a direct impact, Uranus and Gemini, greatly shifting the nature of Central Europe. And the result of that was that the Austrian Empire ended up joining with Hungary, and you have the Austro-Hungarian Empire. After about 1866, when Prussia beat Austria in this, these disputes here in Central Europe. And so, checking out the news today, you see Viktor Orban has just stated that he wants to take over Brussels, Orban, and he wants to make Brussels more in line with his policies around immigration or things like remigration or restricting the migration here in 
Europe. So we're back to these fault lines. Uranus isn't even Gemini yet. This is the transit. It's July 2025, a major one on my list. Because once Uranus enters Gemini, we have the set pieces all in place for a brief period next a year. And that would be Uranus and Gemini, Neptune and Aries, Pluto and Aquarius. The shift of these three outer planets that we're getting to live through in a compressed period of time next summer july 2025 we experience for the first time all three of those planets in their new signs until until the regress of neptune into pisces and i don't have that date here actually let me get it just hold here please just hold so the regress of neptune into pisces in october 2025 and just running through the precise dates here uranus enters gemini 7 july 2025 at that moment we have all three pieces in place uh, until 22 October 2025 when Neptune will come back into Pisces and we're in this zone of transition where we have Uranus also going back into Taurus, Neptune also going back into Pisces. But it's this moment next year, right in July, where we're into this new world with the outer planets. And that's one of my top transits of the year, which is the point of this video. It's that transit. You've got to be awake and aware in July, that first week next year, because our whole new world arrives for the very first time. The interesting thing about Uranus and Gemini, the last little stint of Uranus and Gemini in 1866 was right as the German Civil War began to pop off. Now it completed later in the summer with Uranus and Cancer, but we have this idea of Uranus and Gemini and Civil War all over the world two stints ago. And of course, World War II with Uranus and Gemini is arguably like a global civil war. So that is why the July ingress of Uranus into Gemini is when we must pay attention to 100%. It's a big transit. It's the most important transit arguably of the year. And again, all the pieces are in place. Uranus and Gemini, Neptune and Aries, Saturn and Aries. final transit that I'm very interested in, and this actually comes second in chronological order. The way I've recorded this video has been quite free flowing. This is the ingress of Jupiter into Cancer on 9 June. And the reason why that's important is that you have on 25, 26 May, Saturn into Aries, cardinal axis, cardinal sign, initiation, power, fire, war. You have then Jupiter into Cancer, a mere two weeks later, 9 June roughly, that is a cardinal sign of the home. It's the cardinal sign of initiating around the truth of the reality, the truth of the great encasement of our reality, what we're contained in. The reason why this is so powerful is you might think about the time we've been living through. Even May 2024, Jupiter into Gemini, square Saturn and Pisces, and just how dreamlike this time is. So those specific dates, just to have that precision, ingress of Jupiter to Cancer, 9 June 2025 UTC, ingress of Saturn into Aries, the first ingress of two will be 25 May. So I was correct earlier, but those are the precise dates UTC. That's the pocket of time you need to look for, for what is this whole new reality that will be erected. See that black cube behind me? It's a museum here in Vienna, but Saturn is known as the black cube, or Saturn and the black cube. There's different people that I've written about it. A whole new version of Saturn will be erected in that Aries sign with that energy of force and power. And on the one hand, I don't want to do a lot of that delineation here, but you know, Saturn and Aries means that the conservative models actually get brought through and filtered through the power and force of youth and energy and initiation and maverickism. So in a certain sense, what I'm looking for is less conservative turns and more new, fresh, young initiations. And maybe that black cube will have you know, a tint of you know, red and yellow, right? Sun and Mars. So it's not so dark with Saturn and Aries in a certain way. So back from Vienna, and I wish you an amazing 2025. I'll have more videos on the channel about 2025, breaking more of it down. As we get closer, one of the most important years in our lives, one of the most important years 
astrologically that we will have lived through for a long time. Some people will say 2020. I think this is even more important than 2020. 2020 was not the most important year in my view for a number of reasons. This is because of these ingresses. This major shift of the century gets set up here in 2025. And as always, you can check out my Patreon, SJ Anderson 144 over there as well. I have a practicum live stream where we'll study astrology as a topic. Every month, last month was really cool. We did a how to study astrology methodologies for learning live stream. So you can check me out there. I also have a weekly newsletter available through Patreon called Lunar Signals, breaking down the energies of the week ahead using that moon like the ancient astrologers did. We'll just check in and what moons are best, what moons symbolically are strongest, give you a way to step into your week and your week ahead. So check that out, uh, Instagram, SG Anderson 233 and have a lovely 2025. Talk soon, peace.